What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. This is your first time stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the alternator on a Honda Accord. This Honda Accord is equipped with the V6. It does make it a little bit harder. It's on top, but there is a little bit less room when it comes to the V6 engine. Let's jump right in and talk about parts and tools that you're gonna need for this repair. One thing I do want to know before we get started is you always want to get your car professionally diagnosed. Um, if you have the skills and the know-how to do that, that's awesome. You probably aren't going to be watching this video. Um, first, you're always going to want to make sure that it's not just a dead battery or an alternator causing the dead battery. Diagnostic tips to do that, you can get a voltmeter and check your alternator output. That's always important. It should be above the battery voltage anywhere from 13 to 14. Um, and a half Honda, all the different manufacturers have different specs, but it's usually from 13 to 14 volts that the alternator is supposed to be putting out, um, charging the battery. So this car, we put a brand new battery in it and then they brought it to me and I scanned it, make sure there was no codes. And then I started checking for the alternator output. Uh, so ultimately I diagnosed this to be a failed alternator. It's just not charging. Um, this car is uh, 2014 with some miles on it, so it probably just needs an alternator. Um, we went with the Denso alternator. Um, there's lots of brands out there. O'Reilly's AutoZone, they all offer really long warranties. Um, we went to slightly middle grade alternator with the Denso. So it has only a one year warranty compared to the lifetime warranties. But uh, I'm pretty confident that once we replace this alternator, it's going to be good to go for a long time. Okay, let's talk about tools. Um, you're going to need your basic entry-level mechanic tools, socket set, wrenches, um, pry bars, all those kind of generic tools you should have collecting over your lifetime um, if you like to work on your own cars. The specialty tool I will be using today is the steer wrench belt tool. It comes in a kit on, um, you can get them on Amazon online, uh, but this is gear wrench and this comes in real big handy to take the belt off um most of the time the like on the on the car the frame or the body are, is real close to the belt um, another really important thing is you're going to want to pull up the belt diagram uh for the car you're working on uh different years can can vary slightly uh you can take pictures of the belt before it comes off but once that belt comes off it's kind of hard to remember which which way it goes around the pole you up I'll share a picture, real quick picture of what I'm talking about, what you're going to be looking for when you research or Google a, a belt diagram. You're going to want a flashlight. Um, this alternator does have two ears on it, so we know that there's two bolt, bolt down locations and a connector and then the positive cable to the battery that charges the battery. Uh, some gloves, and that's about it when it comes to the tools and what you're going to need to replace this alternator. Let's jump right in. Um, we'll start by disconnecting the battery and then work our way to the belt and start pulling things off that are look like they're going to be in our way. Okay, always start by disconnecting the battery. Uh, I always start with the, the, the negative. It just helps eliminate some arcing. So always take your negative off first. Make sure it's in a safe place. And then go right for your positive. And then in your little less, it's a little less safe or a little bit more safe once the negative is taken off first. And we'll get this hold down or actually we're not taking the battery out we're going to leave this just leave these disconnected like that and it ensures the vehicle doesn't have battery power while we're working on it it's like this little engine cover uh blocks some of our view you can see the alternator sitting right here this will be your positive cable and then the connector your belt so we'll start by taking this off um just to give us a little bit more sight there is an engine harness that also will need to be unbolted and then I'm hoping that the alternator will come out with some of these power steering lines that are in the way. We may have to loosen the uh, power steering reservoir just to kind of push, give the lines a little bit more play in them so I can sneak that alternator out. Like I said, that gives you already a big difference on in visibility of the alternator. So now that I 
move that. I'm gonna actually take this belt off um, first. Uh, this pulley design lets you actually uh, just use the nut on the tent on the pulley to just release tension off the belt. So let's just get this thing lined up. Sometimes you got to do. That's why this tool is great to have. It kind of just slides in there and it has a ratcheting end. Um, let's see if we can get it onto that nut. There we go. And then you can put this any direction you want, give you kind of more leverage. So you're going to want to release tension on the belt and then pop the belt off. I'm going to actually attempt to just pull it off the alternator and then kind of see if I can. Okay, so I was, this hose is giving me a lot of problems. Um, I'm going to actually loosen this uh, power steering reservoir first. So yeah, there is two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this power steering reservoir down onto the body. See, and I'm hoping that that'll give me just a little bit more flexibility on this hose so I can manipulate the belt tensioner and get my belt tensioner off once the belt is released. So that was the trick. Giving this a little bit more room, I was able to bring my tensioner up far enough so that I could get it out once the bell, once the belt was released. So right now, I think I'm just going to leave it the belt right here. Just kind of tuck it away so it doesn't get completely off. Maybe take it off the AC compressor that's down below. But we will need that to get access to the. I believe they're 14 millimeters that are holding down the the alternator. So now the belt's off, let's work on this little engine battery harness that is bolted here and onto the alternator. A little bit better view. Belt off. This is the positive connection to the alternator, which goes to your battery. Um, this will be the connector. It, they both have rubber boots. Um, there's a little harness on the back side of the alternator that we'll use a trim tool to pull off. Uh, so let's start by pulling this, looks like a 10 millimeter, holding this harness down and then pull our rubber grommet back. And it's probably going to be another 10 millimeter, but we'll check. And then the connector and that, and we'll try to just kind of pull it away from the alternator. And then we'll go at the, the two bolts that are anchoring the alternator down onto the engine. So that is not a 10, it definitely is bigger. So that is a 12. Take that all the way off. Oh, there we go. First dropped little nut. I think I see it. And you can already see that I'm getting a lot more play with this this harness so um, we'll go after this connector next it has a rubber boot on it all right base see if we can get a oh, better look at this alternator i have everything disconnected now there is a your positive connection and then your connector and then that small it's hard to see right there. There's a clip back there. Um, I had to use a trim tool to get it disconnected. So we'll just kind of keep this, just kind of pushed out of the way. Um, now we're gonna go after our alternator anchor bolts. The next, the other thing I forgot, um, this does get in the way. It just kind of pulls up off of a little um, slide bracket. You slide it down into the into these grooves right here. Let's see if I can get a light on that for you. So there's two little grooves there, two grooves there, and it just slides in when you put it back. But keeping this over here will give us some more room. Basically, you can almost see the whole alternator 
um, now that we've gotten this, this stuff out of the way. So there is a bracket here and then a bolt on the bottom side. This bracket has a bolt on the all, one of the ears of the alternator and then to the to the head, to the cylinder head right here. So we'll probably end up taking both off the bracket and the bolt holding that ear down. All right, let's get some sockets and a ratchet and loosen those bolts. Almost forgot I dropped that nut that, and I was able to get it with a magnet. It almost fell to the ground, not so lucky. Okay, the bottom anchor bolt for the alternator is a 14. It's really tight down in here. Let's see if I can get this thing. There we go. Okay. And if I'm correct, it actually, this bolt will actually slide through the AC compressor and the alternator if I'm seeing it correctly. Let's see. Yep. And it has a dowel that'll, that keeps it tight. So we're going to take this bolt out by hand the rest of the way. All right, there's the bottom one. There it is. Put that to the side. And now we'll get the these these top ones with this bracket, which are 12s. Let's go. Let's get our ratchet on there. Loosen those up. <clears throat> okay, those are both loose. They use a power tool here. I'm not having fun taking these out by hand. Creates ratchet. There we go. And try not to drop them because you never want to chase bolts. There we go. And now the alternator is loose. That's awesome. Okay, we got that loose bracket. Take this bracket all the way off. So it doesn't get in our way. So I'll just remember it goes like that, and then that's your hold down. Just like that. This goes through the ear. Set that to the side. And now, theoretically, our alternator is free. Will it come out right here? I don't know. I haven't done one of these in a really long time, and it does not look like there's enough room. Um, really, the only thing that's in our way right now is the fan shroud. So, I think we may be popping these fans out real quick. All right, let's just turn that back around so it's just supporting itself. All right, let's get this overflow completely out of our way set it on the ground where it's not leaking and let's pull this uh this high side fan out we may be able to just leave it plugged in and just kind of pop it up out of our way so the alternator can come free guys are exploring this with me Probably bolts on the bottom too. A lot of 
yeah. So let's take a break, get a mirror down in there, and see if I can get these bottom hold downs for this fan tried out. Okay, I got the fan unplugged. Um, it's a little difficult to see the connector. It, it, it sits on this uh, driver's side of this this fan. You can see it's right there, right there where my light's shining. Um, you got to unplug it, and it has a little bracket with a clip on it that you pull the connector away. So now let's just slide this fan out. Um, support the alternator because you did get it, you did loosen it, or make sure it's not going to fight you, fight against the fan shroud. So you will have to kind of put this alternator to the, to the side here. And then we should be able to slide this fan out just like that. Make sure you don't let go of that alternator. Um, it could fall into this, into the radiator. So now that should give us enough room. Slide it out. Be really careful of the radiator. Um, you don't want to damage the fins. And there you go. It gives you just enough room to slide the old alternator out. So we'll get a better look. Like I said, you don't want to damage these fins when you um, are pulling, sliding that the alternator out from that spot. All right, let's check out the new one and make sure it's the exact same as what we took out before we try to shove it in there. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, one little pro tip. Um, I actually designed this tool. Uh, it's a little dowel puller. Um, there is a couple dowels on here and sometimes when you use an aftermarket alternator, they can be a little bit thicker. The clearances are a little different. So what I'm going to do is throw this on the compressor dowel and just kind of back the dowel off a little bit. And that'll allow my new one just to slide right in to, um, in between the two ears on the AC compressor, the block and the alternator. So like I said, you just going to put this right here, kind of just we're going to just pull this back a little bit and essentially it's just a little puller. So just like that, get a 13 millimeter wrench. And what I'm going to do is just kind of tighten this up. And what it's doing is just pulling the dowel in just a little bit doesn't need to come out this tool is awesome i use it all the time on alternators uh and this is just a design so that it'll snug right up to the ears and different size just the different clearances and stuff can fit on all the different brackets um this tool is a really good tool on the duramax engine uh i do have this tool for sale uh, it, it's not listed on the line, but hit me up if you need one in the comments and, uh, I will send you the link to buy one. All right. We matched everything up. Uh, let's slip this alternator back into its spot. Kind of just test it in your hand. Like, you know, that's going down first. Uh, and then just be real careful of the fins on the radiator. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of hold it like this slide it down keep two hands on it and just kind of fit that lower bracket let's see oh needs to go down a lot more there we go and like i said now that we did that dowel look at that it slides right in there we go Plenty of room to slide the, the ear of the alternator into that lower bracket now that we use that dowel puller to pull the dowel out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to start with the lower bolt. Um, you want to use two hands.
go and make sure it goes through pulled holes and kind of just get it finger tight just like that and then what we'll do is get the upper bracket and start that as well so if we remember right this went onto the block that'll good finger tight there and then we will lean the alternator up slide this bolt through and just get it all finger started never want to use power tools when you're starting the bolt you'll guarantee cross thread it so always start them with your hands we got all three bolts started let's snug these up so this is the 12 Nice and tight. We'll go back over that one after we get that 14 tight. A lot of clearance on this one, so I'm gonna use my ratchet. You're gonna want a nice flexible head ratchet. Um, this this snap-on has a little bend to it too. It helps get it in different position, different areas. But a straight a straight ratchet will work. Okay, we're getting closer. And then you will actually feel, once it's snug, you'll start pushing that dowel back in to, to meet the ears on the alternator. Switch hands here. And then once you get to the snug, just tell it's nice and tight. There we go. come back to these 12s now that we got that just kind of give it a snug there we go the alternator is bolted down to the engine um, now we will put our positive battery cable back onto its post did not come with a new bolt or nut Get that started. Just kind of get it going with your fingers as best as possible. And I like to just hand tighten these and then at the very end just kind of put your just a little snug. You don't, this is a big ratchet for this. You do not want to break the ear. You do not want to break the ear off, off the alternator. That would suck. So just be gentle, snug it up. It's not, it has a little lock washer on the bottom of that nut. So, and then you're gonna wanna slide this, this rubber grommet back over. So nothing can touch it. And then we'll plug it in. Give you much to play with. There you go. It's only gonna go on one way. So once you feel it kind of click, put the rubber back on and then there is that one little engine wire that snaps on the back there we go we are all buttoned up uh let's put this 10 back and then we'll put our fan shroud back in and um, then we'll work on the belt all right let's slide this now like i said they're notched on the bottom so you don't have to take the lower bolts out let's just Slide in. You may need a flashlight. Get it on this. There we go. 
and then we'll take put these upper ones in. That. Tighten those down. You can get to the blower ones from underneath the car. Um, I just use a ratchet wrench to snug them up. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you plug this back in. Okay, now the belt. This will be probably the most difficult part for a lot of people. Um, you want to be really patient and kind of just work the belt onto all the pulleys. Um, I'm going to attempt to, just for everybody's sake, to do to use take it off. You're going to want to leave it off one pulley. Um, so then when the tensioner is the tensioner is released with the pull the tensioner back, you're able to just slide one pulley on. Um, instead of trying to fight a bunch of pulleys at once. So you want to make sure that you are on every pulley with the correct belt diagram um, to the vehicle and the routing. Because you'll know right away if you um, are not routed right because it just won't fit. So let me get my belt tensioner tool and I'll release the tension on the tensioner and try to slip this belt over the power steering pulley. All right, let's give this a shot. Get the tensioner belt tool on the top pulley there. And then we're just gonna connect this. And hopefully I got enough slack to slide it. There we go. And then before you release, well you can release, but you'll wanna look that the belt is in all the grooves, the harmonic balancer, which is the crank pulley, both tensioner idler pulleys, and your alternator, AC compressor, and power steering pump. Um, one of them needs to come over just a little bit. There we go. Did it. There we go. This is why this belt tool, tensioner belt tensioner tool, uh, comes in big. Okay, let's slide our, a, our coolant overflow jug back in the grooves that I showed you earlier on. Sits in there. Um, let's get these power steering reservoir may have to use a uh, magnetic socket. These are kind of tucked under there instead of risking dropping them. Oh, got one. Okay. So, like I said, I'm going to use a magnetic tent. I'm going to cheat a little. That. That one. I used a hand ratchet because it's behind the... just need to be snug let's get this engine cover back on make sure you didn't leave anything in the engine bay just kind of like this kind of just have it like that these are just one twist clips go and your engine oil dipstick. Let's get the battery hooked back up and test this alternator. Make sure we got it fixed. I just start reverse, positive first. Snug them up. And negative. Negative last, it reduces our gain. It's just a little golden rule. Okay, I brought my meter out so we can kind of see what this thing does. Make sure the alternator kicks on and um, is working correctly. All right, let's fire this up. Okay. 
no noises. That's the great sign. Um, okay, while it's running, grab your meter and I'll show you. Let's see. Just kind of test this. Nice. We are sitting at 14 volts. That is perfect. This battery was a little bit low because we were running the engine to move it around the parking lot. That is a good sign. Your alternator is charging if you're pushing 14 volts to the battery. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for the notifications. It really helps out the algorithm. Um, I can't say it enough. Thanks for watching. Bye.